you got to take a tip from the royals. Always be prepared for a funeral. Today we're going to Bella's funeral and Bella was my kung fu buddy's mother and I, I met her a couple times when I was here on the spiel while I was staying at his place. Um, so she was a Holocaust survivor and she actually passed away a couple of days ago at 102 years old. So um, one of the things about living and studying in a place like Israel, especially when you know people here, is that you uh, you really get to participate in uh, the sort of life of the place in a different way than, than what you can when you're just traveling or visiting. So because I'm here, I'm 20 minutes away, um, I absolutely, I'm gonna go to the funeral. So that's what we're doing today. We're gonna go support Uri. I will be waiting for a ride to pick me up. It happens to be going my way, so that's perfect. And um, yeah, so that's, in, that's the program for today. If I look like a wreck, that's probably because I feel like a wreck. I have two sleepless nights behind me and it's got nothing to do with fire alarms or undergrads partying down the hall because it's actually been very quiet the last couple of days and nights. So I guess I must come by this honestly and I'm just getting old. Um, this is a bit of a problem because I also have Kung Fu tonight which is going to be interesting because that is not the place to be sleepy or distracted. So we'll see how this goes. But I suppose it's the appropriate look for a funeral. So yeah. Well, breakfast works wonders, but I still feel like a wreck. <laughs> so time to go take a shower and get ready to wait for my ride and in the meantime, Lechaim. When you're over 50 and you travel a lot or you spend time away from home, you got to take a tip from the royals. Always be prepared for a funeral. Fortunately, I come prepared and I even thought about wearing my black dress, but this is Israel so I figured that would be overdressed. Of course, I could always blame it on being Canadian. You know, I'd be overdressed enough to blame it on being Canadian, but not overdressed enough to be mistaken for American. Perfect. Um, so anyways, I am, plus I balance out my overdressedness because I uh, failed to bring appropriate footwear, so. <laughs> Um, so I should be appropriately over underdressed. So what happened? Was I overdressed? Well, my ride found me by the fact that I was wearing black. So that was actually useful, but not so unusual, I guess, because if you're going to a funeral, in any case, not everybody out there is wearing black. So, so that was helpful. We got to the cemetery and we were all sort of standing around in a circle and my friend was introducing everybody to each other. And I looked around and jeans, 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 <laughs> including my friend whose mom passed away. So if you ever get called on to go to a funeral in Israel, Word from the wise, jeans. That's the way to go. <laughs> so when I got back to campus, I ran into one of the Dutch exchange students I've talked to a couple of times downstairs and she took one look at me and said, you look amazing. <laughs> Clearly, I need to overdress a little more often. Anyways, back to Bella. So, First of all, 
you, something you gotta know about Israel. Nothing in Israel goes as planned, like ever. So just get used to it, accept it, and your life will be a whole lot better. So in this particular case, we were in a really beautiful, very unusual, actually, cemetery for Israel. It was tree-covered, peaceful, it was just gorgeous. Um, it was a very, very lovely, simple, short and sweet ceremony. Um, but the rabbi unfortunately fell ill in the middle of the eulogy and he was able to close the ceremony, but I do think that he was taken in an ambulance to the hospital to get checked out afterwards. I think he's probably fine. We all hope that he's fine. But like I said, things just don't go to plan in Israel and you, you just gotta accept it and roll with the punches. My friend who um, a, couple of, a couple of videos ago, um, you saw us doing Kung Fu on the beach. Um, he actually, when he came about two or three months ago, he came to stay in Israel to take care of his mother because with all the COVID travel restrictions and everything, he didn't know if, if something happened, if he was going to be able to travel. Um, so that's actually why he was here. So it wasn't unexpected at all. Bella was 101 years old and she was amazing. Um, I actually got to meet her a couple of times and you might remember back when I was on the spiel, my friend let me stay at his apartment a couple of times and that was amazing. That was such a big help. I appreciate it so much. And when I got there, it turned out my part of the deal was to go have lunch with his mother. And that was fine for a place to stay outside of Jerusalem. I was happy to do that. And I went and I met um, Bella's caregiver, Carissa and Bella. And I had the most lovely time. Um, she has for some time she had had alzheimer's and when i met her she was 99 years old and she was able to walk by herself and she didn't necessarily know who she was talking to i think she thought i was ori's girlfriend um but that's okay <laughs> as long as as long as you could have like a it didn't matter that she didn't know who she was talking to. She could carry on some kind of a conversation with you. And um, the good part for me was that because of the state that she was in, her, her Hebrew was sort of simple, so it was easy for me to follow and, and have a discussion even in Hebrew with her, which was really kind of fun. And the funny part was that she asked me, she, she said, Mat medaberet anglit? And I was like, Ken, ani medaberet anglit, aval ani rotsal ilmod ivrit. So she came back at me with, well, I don't speak English. And then she proceeded to have a conversation with me in English. <laughs> And she showed me her favorite sweater that she had knit. And I swear, this sweater was so precise, so perfect. Like the things you buy in the store couldn't possibly be that perfect. It was amazing. So that was my meeting with Bella a couple of years ago. And um, then when Ori came to Israel a couple days before I left to go back home, then we went back and met her again. And um, like I said, she was having trouble knowing who she was talking to. So sometimes she would remember who Uri was and sometimes she wouldn't. It was hard. Um, so I think, I think the last years, last 
couple of years especially of her life were difficult um, and she had a long and for large part hard life because she was born in Poland and um, had to flee from the Nazi invaders so she was a Holocaust survivor but she was never actually sent to the camps. She managed to flee and um, went to, I think it was Uzbekistan and Turkmenistan, where, um, where she met her husband and then eventually made it to Israel. So she had a long, hard life, but she was a beautiful person. She worked as a garden, kindergarten teacher. And um, I mean, I, I had the honor of meeting her before before she passed and um, just had a really lovely time with her so I just wanted to give her a, a little piece of recognition <laughs> When I come to Gefunen, shines with toys and zunen, holds my heart's bubbling. Deine Zähne leck, weiß wie Fere leck, mit deine schöne Augen, deine Hände leck, deine Haare leck, holds mit zuget Zeugen, schön wie die Levone, lichtig wie die Stern. Ich ru 